Oh, great, 1030 beer. Okay. Don't judge me. Hey, freaks, it's JJ. I am back. I'm sorry for the long absence, but I am officially back. Now I'm going to try and uh, post some more content. I'm sorry uh, for ghosting y'all for so long. Um, I'll get into that in another video, maybe. Um, but today I'm going to be explaining why Coheed and Cambria is the best band of all time. In my opinion, of course. <laughs> So a lot of people are like, so you claim to be this huge uh, metalhead, but your favorite band is Coheed and Cambria, a band that's not quite metal, you know? Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Um, and they think that's quite strange, and I, I can't say that I disagree with them. I understand. Like, I am a metalhead at my core, yet my favorite band is not really necessarily the most metal of bands. Um, which is fine. I don't think you need to only listen to hardcore metal music to be a metalhead. I think that's a huge misnomer. So to start off some background, I got into Coheed and Cambria uh, my freshman year of high school. So I was uh, about like 14. So that was back in, what, 2009? Um, I know that's a little bit late for some of you who might be watching this and you're like, oh my god, 2009, I was, in Co I was into Coheed when they came out with Second Stage Turbine Blade. Okay, cool for you, but I was pretty young. So I didn't, I didn't get introduced to Coheed until um, my boyfriend at the time showed them to me. So, since then, um, I've been a huge fan of Coheed and Cambria, and they have been my single favorite band for however many years since high school. And some of the reasons why they are the best band, in my opinion, my personal opinion, they are the best band of all time is, um, Anyway, one of the reasons why I think Coheed and Cambria is the best band of all time, um, and if you think different, you're wrong, uh, is because, uh, first of all, oh, there's many reasons, so I'm just going to dive right in here. First of all, um, their music just overall in general, like not going into like the music theory side of it, because I'm not really a musician, so I can't really tell you exactly um, what parts of their music um, from like a theory standpoint that are so intricate and beautiful and creative. Um, but I can tell you from just like a listener standpoint, that um, their music is just phenomenal because it's so versatile. I think it comes most a lot of it from comes from it being progressive metal in general or progressive rock, whatever whatever you want to call them. Is like they play around with their sound a lot, so they're not afraid to experiment with different sounds. They're not afraid to stray into different genres, and so that's another thing why people have so much a, such a hard time um, classifying them into a specific genre is because they do um, hop around, like within one album they'll hop from like a beautiful like ballad to like a heavy rock song to a metal song. Um, and I'm not sure I know like a, a ton of different bands that do that all within one album. Like I have seen other bands progress from like metal and then stray more into like heavy rock and stuff like that. But um, from the beginning they have always been really versatile and of course I am a fan of progressive metal just because it's more intricate, more interesting. Um, and I don't mean to sound like an elitist when I say that. Here comes the other one. Come here! Come here! Good boy. Another reason is because of just how unique their sound is overall. I think that has a lot to do with not only like the creativity of the songs that they make and the, just the different uh, elements that they put into it, but a lot of it has to do with Claudio's voice in general. I think Claudio's voice can be a turn off to some people just because it is different, it's very unique, and it is very high. I mean, I can understand why some people maybe don't like his voice, but I, I think there's just so much depth to it, and I think the way that he sings and the way that he creates music is just so um, emotive to the point that the listener can really connect with him and really feel his emotions. Um, and then of course there's the, aside from the music, there is the concept that goes along with all of the albums, up, which is something huge for me, which is what I think really brings Coheed from being a great, a uh, good band to being a great band for their fans. Because I am the type of person who really likes to obsess over things. If I like something, I need to like know everything about it. I need to uh, just dive into it and explore it to its full ex fullest extent and really know everything about it. So for there to be a band that has a whole nother side of it, has so many comics and stories that I can really just obsess over. Uh, I think that's one of the things that really draws us Coheed fans together is that there's more than just the music. Like, listening to just the music is fine, you can appreciate it on its own without knowing the story behind it, but as soon as you learn 
the story that goes along with the songs, it really helps you connect more to the songs in general. And like, cause I'm, I'm a visual, like I'm a visual learner, I'm a visual type of person or whatever. Um, so whenever I'm listening to a song, I like to imagine that song played out in um, a visual element. Like I would, I think I kind of imagine like what, if I were to make a music video for this song, what that music video would look like if I'm really into a song and listening to it. And so I think to have this kind of um, space opera that goes on inside my head while I'm listening to the song is really something that makes me appreciate their music so much more. Because if you if you can imagine, like, yeah, they've done music videos, but if you, for every single song that they have, have like a visual idea of what it looks like in your head and you're just playing that movie in your head um, to their song, it just makes it so much better. And not to say that you can't enjoy the music without knowing the story behind their songs. Like, you can enjoy it without reading the comics at all. I didn't read their comics for the first, I want to say, first, like, five years of being a Coheed fan. I didn't, um, I didn't read any of their comics, actually, because I couldn't find them. I couldn't get a hold of them. Um, the first, uh, the first thing that I did read from Coheed and Cambria was actually A Year of the Black Rainbow. That was the first thing of the concept that I had read. So, yes, the concept behind their music just makes a fan go from being a casual fan to being a super fan, I think, in my opinion. At least it did for me. Like, I was, like, a fan, and then I got more of a, became more of a fan as they kept listening to more and more of their music, and then I just got all the comics and got a, got a hold of all the stories and just really fell down the rabbit hole of obsession with Coheed and Cambria. So that is one of the top, one of the higher reasons um, why I like Coheed and Cambria and why I think they are the best band, in my opinion. But um, overall, I think there is another reason um, why they are my favorite band. And I think maybe some of you can agree with this or maybe um, feel the same about um, other bands that are your favorite bands. I think, uh, so I'm the type of person who really, uh, I think I can identify with Claudio in a lot of aspects. Um, just because I am also an introvert as well as he is. And I think he is also very um, emotional as well as I am and sometimes struggle with um, getting control of our emotions and then and at the same time having almost like a feeling of crippling self-doubt. Um, so, I mean, I have to say I don't know Claudio personally, obviously. Um, this is based on a lot of the interviews that I've seen from him and a lot of his art in general in writing and music. Um, so I think uh, I can definitely identify with someone who feels like whatever they're doing isn't good enough or isn't what they should be doing because they they're missing out on some other elements in life that maybe they should be doing. I've watched a few interviews from him where he's talked about um, his thoughts on quitting the band and how he thinks about it all the time that um, he might eventually quit the band, he might he wants to do something else, especially now that he has his son, he feels like he should be doing something that doesn't take him so far from his son for so long. Um, so, and I can definitely understand that because I am the type of person who um, feels like I have to remake myself every single year because I feel like whatever I've been doing isn't good enough or I get pulled in another direction because I discover a passion for something that I feel like I need to go all the way with that. So in amongst myself every year kind of remaking myself and getting pulled in different directions and feeling like I don't really know who I am, I don't really know my place in the world and don't really know what it is that I should be doing and if I'm doing the right thing, if I'm following the right path in life or if there's something else that is my higher calling and I should be doing that instead. I think I can definitely identify with the fact that there's so much uncertainty and maybe just not quite knowing yourself to the full extent and feeling a little bit lost in the world. So after, you know, long times of kind of running from myself um, in ways where I feel like I need to um, try and follow one passion and then that kind of fades and fizzles out and now I find follow another passion, as far as like what I should be doing in life and kind of getting lost in, along in the process of trying to figure out what it is I should be doing with my life. I think that it's important to have one thing that stays constant in your life. One thing that you can say, okay, so I've changed my mind on so many things before, but I have this one thing that I will always return to. And I know that that one thing is really who I am. If I have one, one vein of passion for one thing that I know that I'm going to stay at and that I have held on to for so long that I know is actually never going to change, I think that is really important to have. So, um, Code and Cambry is one of those things where I've liked, I've liked them for 10 years and I will probably always be my favorite band. I kind of expected myself to move on from Code and Cambria 
and have my taste change and just find another band that I liked a little bit more. Um, but I haven't. So Coheed and Cambria has been my kind of like my rock. And what I grab onto when I'm like, who am I? And when I don't really know, sometimes I know at least one thing. Um, I know that I love Coheed and Cambria. That uh, transfers into my personal life as far as um, having something and someone that you hold on to, to know that that person is going to be with you no matter what you decide to do with yourself or, or where you're going to go in life. Um, so that like my husband is someone that I grab onto to know who I am sometimes. So my husband is also another one of these constants and probably the most important constant in my life, knowing that whatever iteration that I decide to remake, remake myself as, he's going to be there to accept me as whatever version of myself I decide to be that day or that year. Um, so I think it's important to have a person or just things in your life that you know are never going to change, that are never going to, um, you're never going to move on from, um, that are always going to be there and you can always rely on when you're feeling lost. And I know just in general that this year has been a really tough year um, for all of us. So I've, I'm fortunate to have seen um, an easier side of things compared to what a lot of other people have. And I think we're all struggling in certain ways. And I think that, uh, yeah, I think just to have this talk about where you think you're going in life, maybe you think you're going the wrong direction, maybe you feel like you're not good enough, or maybe you're not pursuing the right thing in life, maybe you're not, maybe you are. But I think now is really a time that we're able to kind of just chase our ambitions and chase our, like, what really drives us. So I've heard of some people who've, you know, lost their jobs and they've just really, um, dove it into their hobbies, just dove it into the thing that they've always wanted to do because now is their opportunity to achieve that thing or um, go and do what it is they never thought that they could in the first place. Now that things have been kind of shooken up in um, your own personal life, maybe if there's something that you didn't think you could accomplish before, I think now with the whole way the world is right now, I think we're realizing that um, we are more self-reliant than we thought we could be that we can accomplish things on our own that we didn't think that we ever could, especially just staying at home and um, being home doing whatever our hobbies are, whether that's music, um, writing art of any sort, or just something that really drives you. I think it's important to realize that um, this day and age with technology the way, to the, the way that it is, if you really want it, you can probably do it. You probably, yeah, I'm not gonna say that you can make a living off of it, but you, if you want something and you want to have a product that you are proud of having created, what, whether that's music or writing, art, whatever, if you want something for other people to enjoy and other people to relate to in their own personal lives, I think that you should do it. Um, and you should do it now. <laughs> um, because just because I think um, of Claudio and how he is always thinking about possibly being done with Coed and Cambria, and I think how... Um, devastating that would be for a lot of fans, not to sound like Coheed and Cambria owes us anything as fans, but I think that if they were to know that the work that they are doing is really important, um, I don't, this video probably will never make it to you, but Claudio, uh, Travis, Zach, Josh, um, the work you're doing is important. Um, it helps people, it helps me, and I think that is the best thing that you can do is to make art that other people identify with and can appreciate to the extent that um, they connect with you on an emotional level. So if your art, if you make art and you, your art connects with people, strangers that you don't know who experience your art, I think you're successful in that. That's a really long um, roundabout way for me to explain that. Um, I have a deep emotional connection to Coheed and Cambria. When I put their music on, I have or an emotional reaction to it. I feel better whether I'm having a bad day or I just need to revel in anger or stew in sadness um, or I want to feel happy and elated. They seem, their music seems to help me cope with whatever emotion that I'm working through at the time. Um, usually I use their music to make me feel happy, but sometimes if I'm in a certain mood, I think they do help me work through difficult emotions that I think plague all of us at some point in time or another. And that's, I mean, that's the case with most music and why metalheads are the way that we are and why we're so passionate about 
um, one band or one genre or whatever. It's because we just have this visceral reaction to it in that we feel like it's a safe place to work through whatever emotions that we're feeling. I think metalheads in general are just more emotional um, sometimes just because the music we listen to helps us to work through whatever we're going through. And sometimes that can be tough shit. And I think metal is the only genre that really helps us to um, look at those feelings, where a lot of other music just pretends like those feelings don't exist. And I think it's important to acknowledge that they exist and to try and figure them out and figure out why you're feeling that way and figure out um, ways to make your life better. So, sorry for this video getting so real. I didn't expect for this, but I just wanted to tell you guys about my favorite band and now I've gone off on this philosophical tangent, so I'm sorry, but, um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> sorry for this, uh, crazy real talk, um, and, um, sorry that I've been gone from this channel for, like, seven or eight months. Um, I will upload more content, and I will get to those videos that I promised you, and, uh, I'll go on more about explaining more Koei songs, exp explaining more concept albums, and I do take requests. Um, I'll also give you one of these random ass videos every once in a while too because I feel like it and I feel like I just need to vent or talk or explain my feelings or I just have a strong feeling that I want to tell people about because maybe you also have these feelings. Uh, maybe you are like me and you don't really know where you're going in life or you feel lost or um, you feel like you have a hard time um, navigating your emotions. So I think I hope that this video is for you and to let you know that you're you're not alone. We're all like that sometimes, at least. I know I am. Um, and I think that as a community, the Metalhead community feels the same overall, and I think that if we reach out to each other, we can help you. So yes, please, this video is for you. I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but it's gonna be okay. You will survive this. Um, just keep pushing on. I know someone or many of you out there need to hear that. I know I needed to hear that at some point during this year, but keep going. It's going to be okay. Bye.